Preach to the breath. Preach to the bones, son of man. And say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. May it be so among us today. Amen. An actor gives an inspiring performance and the audience uh, jumps up with applause at the proper time um, after the play. The coach gives an inspiring speech. Her team then goes out to win the game. A teacher teaches inspiring lessons. His students generally earn excellent grades. Even unknowns. You ever hear of Jesse Winker? I didn't till this week. Outfielder for the Cincinnati Reds at three home runs in one game. The next day, first but first time at bat, hit the four in a row. Of course, against my Milwaukee Brewers and their pitching. Three in one game and one in the next. Incredible. It inspired the crowd in hot, muggy Cincinnati. Inspirational people stir our spirits. They put wind in our sails. They empower you and fill you with holy enthusiasm or good enthusiasm. And that's what happened on the day of Pentecost, which means 50 days, 50 days after the Passover, after Easter. The Holy Spirit inspired Peter and the apostles and the men and women gathered waiting for the Spirit of Jesus, came to rest on their heads in, in what appeared to be lights or flames and the sound of a violent wind and an automatic training of different languages from out the world. And on that day, 3,000 were baptized. So the Spirit of God inspired the church leaders, all the church disciples, and all the, the city of Jerusalem. He breathes life into people's lives. And that's what we celebrate at Pentecost, being alive by the Spirit of God. To the ancient prophet Ezekiel, God gave his people a vision of Pentecost day to come and a restoration also of the church of the Old Testament, the children of Israel. Ezekiel uh, was a prophet who never preached or worked in, in uh, Israel. He was uh, grew up and, and preached and worked in um, Babylon. Uh, he was part of the, the great captivity of the Old Testament church and provided the people with the word of the Lord. And of course, the people were not always happy about what the prophet had to say because they knew in their hearts he was right when he looked out at, at, the, at their condition and saw um, a valley of dry bones. The Lord set me in the middle of a valley. He led me back and forth and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. These bones are the whole house of Israel, the Lord said. Israel says, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. And all of, the, all of that was true. They had been the people of God, but had abandoned the doctrines and worship of God back in Jerusalem. They were suffering the consequences of their sins, being cut off from the walls of Jerusalem and from the, the temple worship which the Babylonians invaded uh, Judah not once, but twice, and Solomon's temple was a victim of the Babylonian captivity. 
They were God's people still, but had indulged in the wicked behavior of their pagan neighbors. They ignored God's justice and God's word. And so for this, God punished them. So it's true, their nationality and independence had been cut off. They were a valley of dry bones. But of course, God won't let that sit. So he sends the prophet to do something amazing. Prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath into you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. The Lord comes to, to restore people, Christians, believers, the church, when she is in exile. And spiritual exile can and does happen to God's people throughout the ages and today. It happens to you, it happens to me, it happens to our church. Like the Jews had falsely put their hope in the walls of Jerusalem to keep them safe from the Babylon army. Sometimes we think the church walls protect us from the outside world. But then a pandemic lays a 14 month siege on our church with all the ferocity of a bloodthirsty Babylonian army. And what happens in American Christendom or churches all around the world are three temptations to sway and to lead us to a valley of dry bones. People turn away from God and trust intellect, science, and speculation. And if you don't believe me, the first commandment says, you shall have no other God before me. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. I'm a follower of Jesus, not a follower of science. I trust God, and I don't trust intellect or wisdom which got us here in the first place now science and intellect and wisdom are great gifts from above great gifts but they are not God the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom knowledge of the Holy One that's understanding and the church in exile must come to confess that for our sakes and the sake of of people in our country. People turn away from God and begin to worship politics and politicians like never before on these shores, once free. People turn away from God and indulge their own egos. Well, that's what seclusion and myopic vision does to a nation, a school, a community and a church. People all think they know it's best for other people, especially maybe when it's best for the ego, for person number one. So as we have sinned against God and man, just what the devil wants, and feel at times like a valley of dry bones, the Bible says, so preach, O son of man. Do not put your trust in princes or in mortal men who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord as God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. The Lord who remains faithful forever, Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and spirit. Then love your neighbor as yourself. Also, we chanted in the psalm, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, you will not despise, putting ego 
in its place. So has the latest and admittedly very severe Babylonian captivity in the form of a bat virus evaporated our Christian faith? So we need the Holy Spirit to breathe life back into us today and forever. Mercifully, thankfully, that's what the Holy Spirit does. Ezekiel tells us, then the Lord said to me, preach to the breath, that is, preach to the Spirit. You know that sounds strange. Don't preach to the congregation, preach to the, before the Holy Spirit. Preach, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come from the four winds, O Spirit, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them, and they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Their bones had been put together, their tendons and muscles and their skin, but they did not have the breath of life. And as God breathed into the nostrils the breath of life into Adam on the sixth day of creation, so he breathed the breath of life into his people, into his church, by the Holy Spirit. God commanded Ezekiel to prophesy to the breath. That is, as I said, speak God's word to the Spirit. This is how God's will and the light of heaven comes on the earth. God sends preachers to speak his word from the Spirit, admittedly. The Holy Spirit uses that word to enter spiritual corpses and create the spiritual life of Christian faith. And that's what the Holy Spirit did with these dry bones. That's what the Holy Spirit did on the day of Pentecost so long ago. That's what the Holy Spirit still does today at Christ the King. He breathes life into us. And not just us. Prophesy to the Spirit from the four winds, the four corners of the earth, as the gospel goes out to the earth, and the gospel then returns to the church from the four corners of the, of the earth north, south, east, and west. The Holy Spirit does this through the gospel of Jesus. His scripture, his sacraments, his promises. And every time you even read about the forgiveness of sins, the Holy Spirit is breathing life into your soul. So why does the Holy Spirit bless us with the word and sacrament of Christ so abundantly? Well, God gives us the reasons in the last few verses of Ezekiel 37. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. To the, for the glory of God, the Old Testament church and Jerusalem were restored until the days when she who was in labor gave birth to the only begotten Son of God and Son of Man. So an actor gave an inspiring performance, the ball player as well, they got a standing ovation Teachers inspire our students. Families and relatives inspire our love. Inspirational people stir the emotion. They put wind into your sails. So Jesus sends you his Holy Spirit today. And he inspires you to have breath and to live. And may the Holy Spirit of God breathe life into us today and forevermore and make us a vast, living army of God again. Peace be with you. Amen.
the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And the creed today on page 5 is the third article of the Apostles' Creed of the Holy Spirit from the small catechism. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own thinking or choosing, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. For the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, and like me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the truth. Thank you.